United Methodist Churches here in Livingston, Montana. It is good to gather together in worship. Um, even through the screen, we are all connected. Um, that same unseen reality uh, unites us through our computer screens. So today, the cabinet of the United Methodist Church, our leaders, our district superintendents and bishop have put together a service for us. And so I'll be sharing several different components of that, including a sermon by our bishop, um, an invocation by one of the district superintendents and a benediction by the others. So our invocation is from Deb Christine. She's my boss. She's the DS of Eastern Montana. And so Amanda's my, share my, here, poke your head in. <laughs> Amanda's my tech person and she's going to share the screen right now with the uh, uh, invocation by Deb Christine. Greetings in the name of the risen Christ. We have celebrated Easter in new and creative ways, and yet we find ourselves still behind closed doors. We may not know where to go from here or how to venture out to rejoin our beloved. What will the world look like when our doors finally swing wide? Today, we, like the disciples, still sit in locked rooms waiting. Jesus appeared to them and said, peace be with you. And the disciples rejoiced. Where and how will we find the risen Christ as we wait for our doors to reopen? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us worship together as we remember this promise. All right, and now we're going to sing together, Open My Eyes That I May See. So again, this will be on the screen with the words. What? Oh. All right, so let's sing along. There isn't any audio for some people. Oh, yeah, my I wait for you, ready my God. Open my ears. And... Yeah, there's no music. No music. Open my mouth and let me bear. Gladly the world. Open my heart, let me prepare. Oh, I'm not doing that right. Word. I wait for you, and I wait for you. Four of us over here, I think, and here. Hi, Jane and Ted. We're, we're having our own little thing along. <laughs> oh, we're kind of hanging. Oh, I see. Here's a little X up here. Yeah, well, we, we had our music cut out. <laughs> All right. Well, unshare. Un stop share. All right. Here we are. I know we have some people muted, some unmuted. We will mute all again. Oh, it was me. There we go. All right. So uh, now we're going to do our prayer time. Um, oh, no. You guys didn't have any idol? 
Okay, I'll fix that next time. Um, turn your mic off. No, all right. We're still working with the details. All right, we're gonna have a prayer time now. And so I'm going to uh, light our candle in honor of those fighting COVID and in memory of those who lost the fight. So are there any names that you all wanna lift up? And I know it looks like that flame is close to my flowers. It's not, so don't worry. We're not going to have a fire here. Um, if you can type into the chat, or otherwise we'll scroll through and try to find who might be trying to lift up names of those fighting COVID or people we want to remember. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody, so we do remember um, Bill Connor is continuing to fight the battle. He's making some progress, but it's slow. So that, all right. And so now we're going to share joys and concerns like we often do in worship. So I do invite you to, to type those into the chat if you can. Oh, here I see a name. Jody's aunt in Michigan made a miraculous recovery. So praise God for that. That's wonderful. Um, all right. And so uh, you can either wave your hand and get my attention, or you can put the prayers in the prayer chat, chat box. Um, and after each one that I read, we will say, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and you can say, here are prayers. So prayers for baby Liam in critical condition. Lord, in your mercy, here are our prayers. Front lines, ICU and ED workers, doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, environmental services, nursing assistants. Yes, all of the people in the hospitals trying to help people we need to pray for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Now we see the Petersons. Go ahead, Petersons. Uh, we got to pray for Justin O'Hare. He and the cow got into an argument Friday, and I think he broke his collarbone and his back, and he's in Billings. Can you say the name? Can you say the name Justin again? Justin O'Hare. Justin O'Hare. Okay. One of the valley neighbors. All right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I see a celebration here. Judy Davis's birthday was yesterday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other cell, other joke. I see Stacy. I just had a wonderful time delivering the. Um, upper rooms yesterday and the flowers and uh, it was just nice to um, to see people from a distance but it was very uplifting for me good good thank you Stacy appreciate that Lord in your mercy hear our prayers so from my parents uh, the people in Seneca South Carolina whose lives have been devastated by the tornado that damaged the UMC church and neighborhood. There was a tornado went through town half mile wide, and that's in South Carolina. And so they're not only trying to deal with the COVID virus and social distancing, but they're recovering from uh, a tornado. Took power out, at least for my parents, for uh, four days, three days, something like that. So uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And I guess I would add to that, they're expecting more storms tonight in the southeastern area of the U.S., so we need to hold them in prayer. Another celebration here. Happy 30th birthday, Judy. So another birthday to celebrate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any other joys or concerns to share? Okay, I'm not seeing so, you know, Here's one for all of our teachers and parents who are becoming teachers. Yes, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, Ted, go ahead, Ted. I see your hand there. Wait, time out. So I think you need to unmute from on in your. It says unmute. Okay, there you go. We got you. Yeah, okay, so our, our friend uh, who played football at uh, with our son-in-law, uh, Carol Jeff Shirley, who had acute leukemia at University of Washington, is now in remission, mm. and um, we'll start maintenance therapy. So that's a, um, a prayer that's been answered. And then our daughter Mackenzie yesterday had an interview at the University of Washington or at uh, Seattle Pacific for a master's program in teaching and. Uh, 
she uh, we've been praying for that interview and it seemed to go well for her. So good. All right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers and praises. Yeah. Anybody else? I see Peterson's again. Yeah. Um, I think her one song. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let me find. Oh, well. Hmm? What did she say? Herb. Carolyn Herb. I got to find them on my screen. Oh, here we go. Right. It was right. <laughs> I'm looking for you. We'll find you. Just a second. No, 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 no. That's the. Go back. There we go. Right here. <laughs> All right. Now we can now we can go. Go ahead, Carol Herb. Okay, I just um, want to pray for everyone that is in Livingston here too, and also that um, God sends wisdom to the leaders of this nation that we don't go too fast and uh, have problems later. That right. we all still stay patient. Thanks, Carol. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And I see one more coming up here from Bertha. Clergy and staff of church, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for all the delivery people who bring us things so we can stay safe at home, yes, we need to keep them in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All right, anyone else? Okay. All right, I'm going to lead us in prayer now. Will you join your hearts with me? Our gracious God, we thank you for the spirit of life that you offer us that even overcomes death. We thank you for that spirit that can redeem even horrible situations and bring good from bad. And so we ask you for that. Lord, we have so much that we can be thankful for, people that are finding healing and, and winning the battle with this disease, all those who are working so hard, putting themselves at risk for others' benefit, for everybody who's been willing to stay at home and keep social distance, that we might uh, keep this disease at bay as best we can. Lord, you think, we thank you for the connection we have with one another, that we can find new and creative ways with technology and other ways to be connecting with one another. Lord, we confess our tendency to deny, to be preoccupied, to be unable to see you in our midst. And we ask that you do continue to open our eyes. Lord, you heard all of our prayers. We pray for our leaders that they might continue to do their best to lead us forward and keep us safe. We pray for scientists that are working on cures and vaccines and, and know history and can lead us and guide us forward. Um, we pray for us to have the patience to see this through and keeping the most people safe. And Lord, we lift up our family members, our children, our parents, our aunts and uncles, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. Lord, we are scattered across the US and across the world and each have our lives moving on, even amidst this big disruption. And so we pray that your grace might be felt by all. We pray all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, yep. hallowed, hallowed be, thy, be name. thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and deliver us our trespasses. <laughs> as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Our scripture lesson today is taken from the Gospel of John. This is the evening of that first Easter. Last week we read about the morning when the women went to the tomb. And this is the evening. This is chapter 20, verses... 19 and on. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. 
And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. When the other disciples told them what they had seen, he declared, well, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe it. Well, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them this time. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's the word of the God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right. Well, now is the time in our service for our offering. And obviously we can't collect an offering here, but I like to remind us of a few things. Um, one is that our ministry is continuing. Uh, we've been saying that churches are closed, but the physical buildings are closed, but our ministry is continuing and we're still able to connect with others and, and give the gift of life and hope and the words of grace to our community. And so if you can, we'd invite you to continue supporting us. Um, each local church is receiving uh, offerings at their, you can mail the checks in. I also posted up our address here, 302 South 9th, 9th Street, Livingston. Um, if you want to send your check in there, that would be great. Um, also, just to remind you, our offering often is about us offering ourselves to God, and that's a form of our worship. And so how can we each be a force for good in our community? How can we bring hope into our community? And so Reflect on that and, and ways that we can be of service to the Lord during this time. And then I'd like to just, we'll talk about this in a bit, but I'm going to put out the question now. Um, what are the silver linings in all of this? How are you seeing God? How are you seeing the resurrected Christ, uh, the life that goes on even beyond death? How are you seeing that in your life and your experience um, the bishop will be talking about that, and then we'll have some time for conversation. And so now we are going to have a message from the bishop. Uh, and so I will share my screen, and we'll make sure we get the audio this time. Um, okay. Okay. Can you hear the video? Wait. There's a I don't know. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you can hear it. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize you were gonna be here yet. Just uh come on in. I just have one thing I need to do, so hold on. Down and I'm not so high. I am the life that will never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. For I am the Lord of the dead city. Dancing wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dead city. Oh, okay. Well, glad you're here. Welcome to the Bishop's residence. Why don't we go into the living room and talk? They were afraid. They shut their doors. They tried to keep safe. It's a story as true as today, but it is actually about the disciples. 
After the resurrection, they were frightened by the news that Jesus' tomb was empty. Frightened by the crowds they saw turn on him for the way they might be treated. So they hid, tucked themselves away, tried to lay low. And yet, they were found. Jesus came through their locked door and proved that he had risen from the grave. He gave them the gift of this Holy Spirit and offered them the freedom found in the forgiveness of sin. He offered them their own experience of resurrection, freed from the weight of guilt and resentment. But Thomas, Thomas, who wasn't there had at the time, had trouble seeing the truth of the resurrection. His eyes were closed to the change in his companions, how, how the experience of the risen Christ had impacted them. He couldn't open himself up to the reality of that power for himself. We too are, are tucked away behind closed doors. Easter just wasn't the same this year. There were no Easter egg hunts, no Easter cantatas, no shared hot cross buns, no churches filled with Easter lilies. We've all been sheltering in place, trying to keep ourselves and others safe from COVID-19. But there is something I know to be true. Easter still happened, and it continues to happen now. The risen Christ still comes to us to show us the truth of the resurrection and to offer resurrection power to us. I have seen lives turned around by resurrection power, and I'm sure you have too. Every time someone puts down the bottle and enters into recovery, there's a resurrection going on. Every time a, a burned out forest shows signs of new life, there's a resurrection going on. Every time a, a broken heart begins to heal, there's resurrection going on. Resurrection is going on right now even in these days we're living. Have you seen evidence of it? I see family members deepening their relationships with each other. I see the earth being healed as our impact on it is lessened because we're sheltering in place. I see people making inward spiritual journeys and confronting the lies they've carried about themselves and being freed to be their full God beloved selves learning new skills, working on old ones, and discovering that the most meaningful celebrations are the simplest. I hear people saying, I'm not gonna live like I did before this. I'm learning the things that really matter. I realize my relationships are what's important. I'm gonna deepen those relationships. I'm gonna love more. I'm gonna serve more. I'm going to be a better human being to all those I touch. My siblings, this is what resurrection power is all about. We are never, ever the same again. Even as we hide away in our homes, Christ comes to us, breathes on us a life-giving spirit and invites our spirits to rise with his. We don't know when this shelter and place will end, when we can leave our homes and embrace one another again. But this I know. Our lives will never be the same. And it's because the risen Christ has visited us. We are a new people. And as we step back into the world, we will rise up as never before. God bless you, my friends. God bless you. All right. Okay, it's great to have the bishop put that together this week to try to give us pastors a little time off and not have to prepare a sermon. So that was a great gift to us. And so what evidence of the resurrection do you see? Um, what, what is something good that's happening that you want to make sure continues even when life gets back to whatever our new normal would be? So I'm going to open up the... Uh, can you give me? So if anybody wants to share something right now, um, I'm going to invite you to do that so I can see people again. You can raise your hand, get my attention, and we'll unmute you. Um, Amy, is Amy wanting to say something? Amy's got right here. I think she raised her hand when the video was going. 
Maybe not. Okay. Still learning the controls I have on my computer. There we go. Mom and dad. Okay. Uh, we haven't seen it in person, but we've seen photos and Facebook pictures after the tornado in, that hit Seneca and uh, our um, church. Major damage around our church. There was um, trees and they had some minor damage to the building, but the pastor has been displaced out of his parsonage and there are many people in that neighborhood who belong to that church who've been displaced. But we see the resurrection in the volunteers that have come to help the extra linemen and electrical people that have come from other counties and other states to help rebuild the power system. The people are donating food, preparing food, um, just lots of that kind of help going on that is uh, probably changing those people's lives, those people who are helping in addition to changing the lives of the people who are being helped. Okay, thanks mom. All right, who else, how are you seeing the resurrection power? How are you seeing the risen Christ in these days? I see Jim's hand. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I just think uh, I, I see when I get out, uh, people just being kinder and uh, saying thank you a lot more and showing appreciation uh, for those that are out there working and uh, serving. And you're just seeing a lot more of that than you normally would. Yeah, that's great, Jim. Yeah, a lot more goodwill. And, and I feel like when people ask me how I'm doing, it's not as much of a passing comment that people really do want to know. So yeah, that's good, Jim. And who else has a way you're seeing the risen Christ, the power of God at work in these days? Ted. Um, you, okay. Yeah. So this, this has sort of been an evolution, but um, it's uh, more on a personal level. Um, I've always tried to, um, um, before I go into my work, uh, have uh, some devotions myself, but with more time, um, Barbara has joined me and uh, we've had a lot more time and we've spent a lot more time praying for our friends and, and people who um, are having uh, health problems or troubles. And, and it's, it's brought Barbara and myself much or closer in that area. And it's something we want to per continue. And, and it makes me reflect on retirement, my role in retirement. <laughs> and uh, one thing that uh, I can do is, be on my knees praying for those around me who, uh, uh, and God, uh, and we've been reading uh, some spiritual books. Um, we just uh, finished reading a, a book about a uh, uh, named Rocco and miracles that happened. And, and in that book, one theme was it's not, we need to step aside and let God do what God can do, what God wants to do. And a lot of that is uh, initiated by prayer, not us going out and, and saying, oh, I'll take this into my own hands. And so as I uh, am approaching retirement more, I see a, a definite role um, mm -hmm. uh, to bring about God's will, uh, not going out and doing things, but uh, necessarily, but on my knees. And it's been a blessing for Barbara and me. So. Good. Thanks for sharing, Ted. That's great. Yeah, this is a opportunity to get closer to people we love and care about and find different ways to serve than we might have done otherwise. Anybody else? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, yes. <clears throat> I see the world coming back to the way it was created as the skies are getting cleared of all the smog and the animals are beginning to retake the space that we've pushed them out of. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to learn to live a little cleaner keep God's creation the way it needs to be. Yeah, that's a great, a great message. Yeah, I think the planet's getting a chance to breathe in ways it hasn't recently. So, yeah. Uh, Dan and Jim. I'm, I'm just, uh, this morning is uh, kind of a return to reality. When I first got up, it was overcast and it was calm and it was, we, we appreciate, always appreciate when there's no wind, but it was just kind of a dreary day. 
And as, as this service has progressed, the sun has come out and it's shining through the window. And uh, it's kind of changed my whole outlook today. And uh, this helps. But uh, it, was, it was kind of phenomenal the, the way it just gradually came out and got brighter and brighter. Just a sign. Yeah, that's great, Jim. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, definitely. I, one way to see the risen Christ is in us gathering together through all this technology. Who'd have known two months ago we'd be doing something like this and everybody's jumped in. All right, Mary, I see your hand. I, um, I have a greater appreciation for people who lived through the Depression and the lessons that those folks tried to teach us that we weren't really receptive to. And now <laughs> seem, uh, you know, <laughs> pretty important again. So I think that's... Um, it's always nice to appreciate your history and, and uh, implement things that could make an improvement now. Right. Good, Mary. Thank you. All right. Okay, I'm going to lead us on now to our um, next hymn, our closing hymn, really. Um, it's Hymn of Promise. We sing this on Thursday night, and I told them it's one of my favorite we did not sing it on Easter Sunday, and it's always my favorite for Easter, so I chose it for today. So a hymn of promise. We'll try to make sure we get the sound going properly this time. And just we do have a benediction from the district superintendent of Utah in Western Colorado. His name is Marv Bose. Um, just before we pay, we play that, um, I just uh, want to. Oh, we're gonna. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I want to let you know that we're gonna. After this, we're gonna stop the recording, but then we'll open it up for you to greet one another. And if you want to stick around for a coffee hour, I have a. a way to try to do that today to, to break up into smaller groups and talk to one another. So uh, blessings. It's great to see everybody. Here's Mars benediction for us. And so friends, remember, you are the body of Christ. You have risen with him. And in your life, you have his life and grace and power. And so go into God's world and be all that God longs for you to be. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thanks for being with us today.